So into our previous video, we have discussed about the Linux distributors. We have seen some of the distributors of Linux operating system. Now here in this video, I'm going to tell you about the Linux directory structures. Now what is Linux directory structure? Now basically, Linux operating systems keep everything in completely different way. Not like your Windows operating system. Like when you install the Windows operating system, you directly get your C drive, D drive and you can keep the data into it. But you don't know where the system files are stored and where your devices are located. So as I said, your Linux is completely open source. So you can see everything where your generally devices, your programs, your configurations are stored. So here we are going to talk about your Linux directory structures. So Linux directory structures generally stores the data into completely different locations unlike your Windows. So here everything is stored as a file and folders. Even your devices are stored into the files in a particular folders. So the folders has multiple subdirectories, subfolders into that you also keep some of the files. So basically you should understand what this folder contains. Because when you install the operating system, you won't find any C drive, D drive, E drive or your my computer. But everything you will find that is your slash which is called as front slash or a mount point. Under that bound point, you will find different directories, which we are going to see over here. We'll find a directory called as slash bin. Slash bin is a binary files. So whatever the commands you are going to store will be located into the binary file. And all these directories, which you can see here, are generally created into the mount point, which is your front slash. So this mount point contains all the particular directory. Each and every directory you can see over here contains different tasks and contains different contents. So very first we are going to talk about slash bin. So whatever the commands generally you have or you generally use like creating a user, creating a file, creating a directory, everything will be stored into this slash bin which contains all the files for your complete commands. So basically when you run the command, this binary files get worked and it provides you the output. The next we have that is slash boot. So like your Windows operating system, you might have seen some system reserved partitions into the operating systems. Like your Windows 7 contains it, your Windows 8 contains it, as well as 10s contain it. So what the system reserved partition is? It contains your booting file. Same here in the Linux operating system, we have all the booting files installed into this particular directory by default. So when you install the Linux operating system, you will find the booting files get loaded into the boot. And here, the booting file is completely different. Here you will find grub or grub2 as your booting file. And in an earlier version of your Linux operating system, you used to also find Lilo operating systems, which we are going to discuss later. The third file which we have that is your da slash tape. This directory contains all the devices files. Like if you have connected your hard disk, if you have created a partition into the hard disk, everything will be stored into the devices. If you connect any particular USB drive, if you use a DVD drive or CD drive, this will again be stored into the devices. So whichever the device you connect, either it is a directly attached devices or a removable or hot plug and play devices, all will be stored into slash tape. Next we have that is slash etc. Now whatever the configuration you do, you define a host name, you define IP address, you configure some servers like your FTP, NIS or any particular servers. All these particular services, all these particular settings will be stored under slash etc. So whichever the configuration is, all the configuration file you will be finding into slash etc. The next directory which we have that is slash home. So slash home is a directory which contains the home directory of your users. Now we can see multiple users or we can create multiple users into the Linux operating systems. So when these users get logged in, all the data which they are going to create on their desktops, on their documents or any of their directories, all this will be created and saved into the slash home directory. So if suppose I have created a user with name user1, so the home directory will create a separate folder for user1 and whenever the user will log in, this particular data of this user1 will be stored into slash home slash user1 directory. So same way for other user like your user2, it will create an other directory. So none of the user will be able to see each other's data. That generally is stored into the home. But this is basically only for your 
standard users which is a non root or non super users next directory which we have that is slash lib so lib contains all the library files now if suppose you want some help if you want to get some help regarding any particular command or how to configure that particular command or you can see the parameters what the parameters we have for a particular command all the help option you get into the library the next we have that is called as a slash media so slash media is basically a directory created so that you can find this particular hot plug and play devices auto mounted over here now basically uh, in previous organization we never used to have the slash media but now we have the slash media so that it is easier for the users to work on the desktop of any of the linux distributors so that if they connect any hot pluggable device like your usb or you connect a dvd drive directly it will be mounted on your desktop means if you will be seeing it on your desktop because it is by default stored and located into slash media directory next we have that is slash opt so all the optimized data whatever you have that will be stored into the slash opt next we have that is called as a slash bin so slash bin is a super bin now earlier we had discussed about the bin we have told you it contains all the binary files but this binary files are only for the standard users like if i want to create a new user using a particular standard user i won't be able to do that even you have the same thing into windows operating system right from a standard user you cannot create a new user because its completely command are stored into different location even in windows and even in the linux operating system so basically when the basic user or we can say a standard users get logged in they generally access slash bin but what if about your super user super user is nothing but a root user root user is just like an administrator you have into the windows so this particular user root user have access to everything he can do everything into the linux operating system he can modify anything he can create anything he can configure anything or delete anything so this super user use this slash as bin for storing its all the particular binary file and what are the commands he is going to use will be pulled by this particular binary folder itself the next we have that is called as a slash srv so all the service related data which services are on which services are started on the boot or which services are stopped all this particular data you will find into slash srv the next directory which we have that is your slash temp you may be knowing about the temp directory so if suppose you are doing some temporary task like you are copying a dvd from one drive to your hard disk or you are creating a dvd dvd images correct so if you are using the dvd dvd image it temporarily stores the data into your ram for a particular period of time so that it stores into the slash temp folder into your windows and here we have a slash temp so whatever the temporary files you want you can store into the temp once your system is rebooted this particular files will get flushed out so that's the reason they are called as a volatile storage for your linux operating system the next directory which we have that is your slash usr so slash usr contains all the user programs now for example you have installed some package or you have downloaded some program into your linux operating system all the particular files of that particular program will be stored into slash usr this usr will create all the samples files of that particular program so if suppose you do not know how to configure particular server or particular program you will be having those particular sample files pre configured into the slash usr you can get the data you can copy those particular files into slash etc where we keep all the configuration and configure it so slash usr contains all the particular programs applications tools and the services which you installed data will be stored into it the next directory which we have that is your slash var it contain all the variable files so basically what are variable files variable files or variable data are those things which generally change like for example i can say you have defined an ip address to your machine on a dynamic way so dynamic way means it is going to change whenever the server releases this particular ip address so you might have seen when you connect your wireless devices your ip changes 
same way if you might you can see about your dns if you know about dns dns is a domain name system it contains all the host name of all the particular systems which are connected in a particular domain so if a domain name changes or if your ip address of your local host changes it automatically replicate or change that into it correct okay? so those data which generally vary which do not which are not constant are generally stored into slash var the next directory which we have that is slash root basically slash root is a home directory of your super user root slash home contains the standard users home directory but root stores its complete data into a different directory called as slash root the next directory which we have slash proc so this proc contains the information about the devices you have connected and their process now for example uh, my memory which i have connected that actually is used by your system so we can see whether this memory is completely utilized or not what is the process what is the progress rate of the you know the ram which we are using what is the service which we are using what is the progress rate of it what is the utilization of your different devices different resources connected to in your system you can get all the information into slash proc so basically the last directory which we have that is called as a lost plus found so lost plus found is a directory which we have into all the distributors now this particular directory contains the data which is misplaced like we do not have a proper location where it should be stored so those particular data by default moves into your lost plus found so this is the directory structure of your linux now if i am going to add any device i'll be adding into the day if i want to add anything into the media i can add uh, directly into the media or if i connect into the machine my pen drive or my cbd all the automatically it will move into your slash media so basically we will be working as we use into the windows operating system but in back end your data will be stored into different places this is what we have seen about the directory structure into the next videos we are going to explore more of your linux operating system